Broadcasting live from the apocalypse, coming to you from our secluded bunker on the west bank of the Halifax River, I'm your pandemic professor, Scott Velasco, and this is part two in our series about automation. So if you tuned in for part one, you learned how to enter automation using the smart tool. Today we're going to discuss using the pencil tool and fader automation. So let's get right to it. Yeah, so the second thing that I want to do is there's this there's this really cool synth, this sort of arpeggiating synth that is just kind of working its way down through the, the chord tones after every vocal line. And first I want to bring that out because it's a really fun texture. And then I want to do something to it that's going to really draw our ears in, kind of make us perk up a little bit. Let's listen to what we're talking about first. This is on our Keys 2 aux. Yeah. Okay, the first thing that I'm thinking is there might just be too much new information happening in that moment, because not only does this keys thing enter, but there's also a guitar playing that ding, 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 ding. Let's, let's, the keys are really cool. Let's for a moment at least mute the guitar. I bet that's on the Guitar Funk channel, so, and uh, just pull that all the way down and go back down to our keys Go back down to our keys two channel. And let's pull it up. Let's go too loud. Let's hear what, what eight decibels sounds like. That's that's definitely gonna be nice and nice and hot. We are going to go in and just grab the beginning of that sound and pull it up so that our ears catch it. And then we'll quickly bring it back down, because once your ears recognize that it's there, your mind is aware of it. And that's just a fun way to kind of keep things balanced in, in, in perspective, but make sure that those little details pop out. So let's head to Pro Tools for a second. We pulled it up 8 decibels, and that was undoubtedly too much. I'm just going to use my, use my grabber tool so we can uh, grab this second this second uh, keyframe and just pull that down quickly. We'll pull it down to about half. So it jumps up to eight decibels and then comes down to four. And then we'll even add another keyframe. I'm just holding option right here. Or I'm sorry, I'm holding command right here to add a keyframe to that. And then kind of quickly level it out until that thing's, until that passage is done. Let's hear it. Show me the moves I've never seen before. Okay, let's let's move that just a little bit. Let's grab that and move it over here. Grab this second one, move it over here and let's try this. Show me the moves I've never seen before. Get you racing. That's nice. That I I like that a lot more. I like that a lot more doesn't dominate over those background vocals we just turned up. We turn up the background vocals, we turn up the synth, and suddenly we're saying, well, now, now it's hard to hear the background vocals again. So this way, the synth pokes its head out and then comes down into perspective, and that's a, that's a nice idea. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to find a way to, I want to do something fun with that synth. I want to, I want to make it sort of pan from one, one channel of our mix to the other, just during that first, just during that first time it enters. Uh, if we do it too much, it's going to get cheesy really quickly. But let's, let's just bring it out, just kind of make something fun happen here. And this time we're going to use our, our pencil tool. So select the pencil tool. And instead of... And instead of our volume, let's use a screen detail here. Instead of our volume, change this so that we're viewing. You'll notice there's both a pan left and a pan right. Because this is a stereo aux, we're going to put it on pan left first. And we're going to draw kind of the same general curve on both the left and right channels, starting from the left and moving to the right. And we can do it just while we listen. Let's try. Show me the moves I've never seen before. And we'll do the same thing to the right. Let's try that. Well, first we're going to have to slide the whole left or the whole right channel up to 
100% left so that it starts entirely in our left ear and ends in our right. Go back to our pencil here and do the same thing. Show me the moves I've never seen before. Show me the moves I've never seen before. And then with my smart tool, I'm going to hold down option and click on this last keyframe here and get rid of it. There we go. So now we've done something that kind of just brings that synth out, makes it a little more interesting. We got rid of the guitar that was kind of muddying the picture and we used our pencil tool to draw some automation. Okay. Well, I guess I'm splitting this video up into three parts. Turns out I had more to say about automation than I realized. In our first video, we talked about using the smart tool. In this video, I just discussed the pencil tool. And if you catch video three, we will talk about using fader automation and the different automation modes that can be found in there. Till then, it's time to bounce. This is Scott Velasco fading out.